Right everyone, it is Finn here and welcome to my AFCON Match Week 2 prediction video where today we've got some gigantic games to talk about from Ivory Coast versus Nigeria, Ghana versus Egypt, Senegal versus Cameroon As an African football fan, you cannot ask for much better <laughs> Are you in love? I am in love. And of course, I'm going to give my best attempt at predicting every single game this match week. Of course, match week one, I would prefer not to talk about it. It was slightly more unpredictable than I thought it would. But of course, I'm still going to give it my best shot. And of course, I do want you guys to give your best shot in the comment section down below. Just so I'm not the only one who gets called crap every single week. It's starting to get to me. But of course, enough crying. Jumping into our first game of match week two of AFCON 2023, we have Equatorial Guinea versus Guinea-Bissau. Now, of course, Equatorial Guinea are the favorites heading into this game. They were unbeaten in 2023, which I feel like no one is talking about, weirdly enough. And of course, to start off your AFCON campaign with a draw versus Nigeria, you have to give them credit. Not bad, not bad. And especially versus Guinea-Bissau, once again, I hate to say it, who defensively I found were way too open versus Court of War in their first game. I do feel like I have to give this one to Equatorial Guinea. They look a bit more clinical. I do feel like they look a bit more threatening going forward. And they do tend to lock up slightly better in defense. As I said, versus Guinea-Bissau, they are the strong favorites. Now, talking about strong favorites, heading into game number two, we've got Ivory Coast versus Nigeria. And I'm not sure there is a strong favorite yet. These are two mammoths in the game of African football. And conveniently, talking about mammoths, looking at the elephants, obviously Ivory Coast being the host of the competition. Starting off with a 2-0 win in their opening game, they've got that bit of motivation there. They could build the momentum. And if I did have to choose a winner here, as much as I kind of want to go for a 2-2 draw, I have to go for Ivory Coast here. And it might be a shock result with a 2-1 win. As I said, my fear heading into this competition with Nigeria is the fact that although on the attacking front, they can be scary. Unfortunately, in their first game, they actually weren't that clinical. I also found offensively, once again, way too open at the back. And versus Ivory Coast, who once again, point proven in their first game, one of the best midfields in Africa. I do feel like Ivory Coast are stronger heading into this game, especially from a confidence point of view. Now, talking about confidence, jumping into game number three, we've got Egypt versus Ghana. And these are two top African football nations who've got very very low confidence at the moment. Obviously, look at Ghana. Losing your first game 2-1 to Cape Verde, it should be illegal. Look at uh, Egypt though, once again, just snatching a 97th minute equalizer versus Mozambique. They were close to also losing their first game. And I do feel like this is a gigantic matchup for both of these two teams. And if either of them do want to advance very late into the competition this tournament, I do feel like this is a must win game for both teams. In terms of a favorite here, I'm really not sure. We don't know whether Mohamed Kudus will be available for Ghana yet at the time of recording. But if he is eligible to play, I do feel like this could be huge for Ghana. Saying that though, look at Egypt versus Mozambique, I definitely wasn't impressed. I feel like they did rely a lot on Mo Salah to kind of come and play deep. And he had to do the attacking ability. So once again, I do feel like there's a lot on the line for both Egypt and Ghana. If I had to choose a winner here, as much as I love the Ghanaian national team, I was left with very little hope after that Cape Verde game. And I just have to give this one to Egypt. I'm going to say 1-0. I think it could still be an incredibly close game. You have lost the fans tonight. You don't deserve the fans. You Cape Verde versus Mozambique is our next matchup. Now, don't get me wrong, although Cape Verde won their first game and Mozambique only drew their first game, this could be an incredibly close encounter. And looking at Mozambique, the resilience they had versus Egypt, the kind of display and heart they showed in a game like that. This might sound controversial, but I am going to go for Mozambique with a 1-0 win here. Saying that, it could very much be an easily 1-1 draw. I feel like both teams could give a lot in it. I do feel like they could be very very competitive versus each other because if either of them do want to advance to the next stage they are the team that they have to beat but ultimately once again i don't predict draws that's boring Ooh, you're hard showing off Senegal versus Cameroon is next in another gigantic football matchup. Once again, this match week is just insane. And looking at Senegal, one of the few top footballing nations that actually won their opening game. And looking at Cameroon, once again, yes, they did draw the game. Andre Nana, unfortunately, wasn't able to play. I wish I had that luxury as a Man United fan to say. But ultimately, looking at Cameroon, there is a lot of heart in this team. And I feel like they'll be very resilient versus the current AFCON title holders. But saying that at the end of the day, looking at Senegal, the way they start, 
started with a 3-0 win over Gambia, I do feel like I have to give them the result here. Saying that though, I feel like this could potentially be a high scoring game, but I am going to leave it at 2-1 at the moment. I feel like Cameroon are missing some star plays in this competition. I do feel like Brian Mbwemu would have been brilliant in the addition to the attack, but looking at Senegal at the end of the day, it is a very complete team. Next up is Guinea versus Gambia. Now look at Gambia, I've always praised that I really like their attacking kind of ambitions, that on the attacking front they can be super exciting to watch, but unfortunately a 3-0 loss in their first game versus Senegal, it's not very promising, and versus a Guinea team that has a lot of talent in it. Obviously they drew their previous game, which was a huge one versus Cameroon, I think this is another huge game, where both of these two teams, if they want to be kind of that third best team in the group, they have to win this game. Now of course a lot on the line for both of these two teams, but if I I had to base it purely on a confidence point of view and what I've seen out of match week one, I have to give it to Guinea. So I'm going to go for maybe a slightly narrow 1-0 win. Once again, let's see what you do, Guinea. Algeria versus Burkina Faso is next and another giant game in African football. Obviously, looking at Algeria, drawing their first game versus Angola is not ideal. But saying that, they were very dominant in the start of the game and they showed a lot of promise that if they can carry their confidence over, they could dominate some teams. Oh, behave. <laughs> but in terms of dominating, I don't think Burkina Faso is a team that can be dominated. Defensively, can be super, super solid. I think Tap Sober is a top quality defender on the attacking front. I mean, Bertrand Traore, when he plays plays for the national team, he turns into a prime Maradona weirdly enough. I think this Burkina Faso team is still heavily underrated, although I do think Algeria, once again, they've got a lot of quality there. I do feel like this could go either way, and I know I'm contradicting myself from earlier, but I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw here. Now nah, I'm just messing with you. I do think Algeria, once again, may be a tiny bit of a fluke start, and they're going to take this one 2-1, but it could go either way. Mauritania versus Angola is next. Now, obviously, look at Mauritania. Losing their first game versus Burkina Faso would not be ideal, but saying that, they weren't the favorites heading into that game. We're looking at Angola. Getting a draw versus Algeria, the best team in the AFCON qualifiers, in my opinion, is absolutely gigantic for them. Now, obviously, we know them to be quite a physical team, especially defensively. They can be super, super difficult to get through. And to be honest, I don't see Mauritania getting through the defense of Angola, and I do see this being a 1-0 win in the Angolans' defense. Tunisia versus Mali is next another gigantic football game and looking at Mali as a South African I'd prefer not to talk about them after that 2-0 loss I prefer really not to um, not to speak but as I am a African football channel I kind of have to and look at Mali so much quality throughout from attack to defense I really can't fault them we're looking at Tunisia once again another top nation but they lost to Namibia in their opening game and once again as someone who's from a southern African country I've never been so excited to watch a team like that win Namibia to get their first ever AFCON win where at the end of the day Tunisia need to pull their socks up they were nowhere near the level they need to be if they want to advance to the next stage and because of that I'm going to go with Mali with another 2-0 win. Morocco versus the DRC is next, and I have to go for Morocco here. Obviously, in their first game, beating Tanzania 3-0, which once again, I do feel like was expected, versus a DRC team that drew versus Zambia in their first game. Once again, kind of an expected result. I do feel like Congo should do something special here, or they could do something special here, should I say. But at the end of the day, I do think Morocco at the moment are the best nation in African football, and it's going to take something special to take them down. The second last match of the match week is Zambia versus Tanzania. Now, of course, this is very easy in my opinion, as it has to be Zambia with a 2-0 win here. Obviously, look at them. I think on the attacking front, they can be very lethal. We saw that in qualifiers versus Ivory Coast. I do think the likes of Dakar is a very underrated attacker versus a Tanzania national team that picked up a red card due to foul play in the previous game. God damn it, Tom! Goddamn Once again, very sloppy, very amateur kind of errors. I think defensively, they can be very weak on the attacking front. I don't find them very threatening. At the end of the day, it just has to be Zambia. And of course, that takes us to the final game of the match week with my country, South Africa versus Namibia. Now, of course, if Namibia play anything like versus us, like they did versus Tunisia, I am terrified. It's starting to get a bit shaky, you know? I mean, I'm a little bit weak. But at the end of the day, Namibia, it is their only ever win in AFCON history. And South African previous AFCON winners, I would hope we can do slightly better. No, we lost 2-0 to Mali, but at the end of the day, I didn't think we started off that bad. In fact, I would say that technically speaking, we won the first half. If my grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. I found we had a lot of attacking opportunities and I just feel like missing that early penalty from Percy Tao kind of knocked our confidence a tiny bit. So of course, if we can get on the back foot, I think South Africa can win here. So I'm going to end up going with a 2-0 result. 
But that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for my AFCON Match Day 2 predictions. Of course, let me know what you think I did wrong down below. I know a lot of people tend to do that. Don't worry, I'll get the tissues out to wipe my tears away. <laughs> Okay. But of course, guys, I hope that you did enjoy this video. Leave your predictions down below, and I'll see you all very, very soon. F Y double N fin. Ooh, I didn't say that right.